Yay Networks. Hi there, I'm Mia Sanchez, and you may recognize me as Miss USA and first runner-up at Miss Universe. Well, there is so much more to me than the sash, the crown, the dresses, the chicken cutlets, and the butt glue. Yep, that's a real thing, and we'll get into that later. I am a fourth degree black belt, a women's self-defense instructor, a mother, and a wife to my amazing co-host, Daniel Bucco. We are keeping it real as we dig into relationships, parenting, confidence, self-defense, travel, all the joys and struggles that come with living this beautiful thing we call life. So pull up a chair and throw your hair in a messy bun as we chat with all types of life experts. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and look out for Hold My Crown wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Hold My Crown. I'm here with Brittany Cartwright. Hello. Thanks welcome, for having welcome. me. Yay. I'm so glad you're here. So I just had to change your last name to match your last name on your Instagram profile. <laughs> so we're all good to go. Straightened up in my phone. Yes. I was like, what name do I say right I now? I took that off of my Instagram bio like a month ago. Yeah. And it, of course, everybody noticed instantly. It became like a thing. But I never actually legally changed my last name to Couchy. Okay. It's always been Cartwright. But I put that on there because when we had Cruz. Right. Um, his Instagram little handle was like at little baby Couchy. Yeah. And everybody was like, where did Couchy come from? Right. Nobody had any idea because no. it's Jax Taylor. Which in reality, he's Jason Couchy. Oh my God. But he goes by his <laughs> stage name, Jax Taylor. So I just felt like it was so confusing. And I didn't want Cruz to be the only one that yeah. was like using it. But like now I'm like, he's about to be a Cartwright. <laughs> That's hilarious. Jax don't act right. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do, yeah. girlfriend. And then even with Michelle, who also is on the show with us, yes. I, I I told her I was like, I need to change your last name on my phone. I haven't done that yet either. Yeah, we gotta gotta get that right. Yeah, gotta get and that fixed. And pronounce I think Sunny Sunny I Sunny I. I was trying to practice. I need. I to was like, girl, more. I am so country. You're gonna have to tell me how to pronounce that last name twenty million times. Exactly. We'll get it eventually. <laughs> yeah. So um, I do need to. It's fix a really all those pretty things. last name. It is pretty. Yeah. So we gotta get that all situated. But <laughs> Brittany, um, I feel like my pageant audience unless they watch reality tv might not know all about you so i want to kind of give like a little mini intro but i would love okay. for you to give more of the intro because obviously you know you you've been living your whole life <laughs> um but what i know and from our friendship really started in la but i know you're from kentucky and that's one of the first things we connected on yes because well i want to have a question for you so let's First, have you tell me about you, and then I have a question for you about how we first met. Okay. Um, well, yes, I'm from Kentucky. I moved in to L.A. in, golly, it's been nine years now. Almost on, on the Time 4th flies. of July, it'll be 10 years. Oh, my gosh. So I literally packed up my little Ultima Coupe and drove it <laughs> cross country by myself and drove to a 4th of July party at Sheena Shea from Vanderpump Rules really? house. And that's where like Jackson, everybody was at having a party at her parents' house. Oh, fun. And I just drove all the way across the country, stopped and partied at her house all night. And that was my first day living in LA. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So then ever since then, I've been on Vanderpump Rules. I, I started Vanderpump Rules on season four, mm -hmm. was on for five seasons. Seasons, um, did a peacock show like Watch with Jackson Brittany, did a bunch yeah. of different jobs and things and here and there commercials and different stuff that's been really fun. And then now, of course, we have the valley. Yay, I love it. <laughs> now, so Sheena's parents' house is that the one that Summer's birthday party was at last year? That was her aunt's house. That's her aunt's house. Yeah, okay. but it's in that same kind of area. Okay, got yeah. it. Got it. Azusa is yes. where they're from. Okay, so cool. she's from Sheena's definitely more local, yeah, than the rest I of the like cast. I feel like no one in LA is local, no. so she's one of the like actual California. Like she's people. actually from a va the valley. Yeah. Like not our, really ours. Not but this valley. A valley. A valley <laughs> in Southern California yeah. in the LA area. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah, that's kind of my story. I love it. So I wonder if you remember, like, what do you remember from when we first met? Do you have any memories of when we first met? Um, I just, well, I do remember Jax coming home from the football game uh -huh. and being like, I really think that you're going to love um, Danny. Nia was Miss USA, like, telling me, like, all about you and, like, yeah. all this. And I was like, oh, my God, yes, I would love to meet them. And then I just, whenever I did meet you, I just thought you were so sweet. And we kind of, like, instantly clicked over different things. Yeah. And you were just, like, you remind me, even though 
you are, you've been here for a long time as well, but you remind me a lot of my friends back home. Oh, I love like that. Like how like honest and real and yeah. like sweet you are. So you just felt more, you felt like a piece of home even though you were in LA. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I feel like that's probably how you feel to everybody because you are like the most kind, warm, welcoming person. Thank you, thank you. That's what I tell anybody about like, oh, they say, how was your experience being like Jax and Brittany and... I instantly remember. So I met you on New Year's Eve at your house. Yes. That was like the first time Asher was six weeks old, oh like all gosh. wrapped up, all little snuggly little. So you've been there. to my parties like f- right after having the baby, literally <laughs> after having the baby, and every day since, like yeah. all the parties. But um, and we were talking about pageants, and you had said that you'd done pageants yeah. before, and then we talked about Kentucky, and the Miss USA that year was from Kentucky. Yes, and yeah. then you told me how you worked at Hooters, and she had worked at Hooters, and there was like all these like fun like touch points of connection yes. and then yeah you're just so welcoming and even everybody else in the group I remember meeting so many other people that were from like the Vanderpump show and all of that and everybody was nice but you were the one that actually made me feel welcome oh thank so, you yeah I love that okay so I have a few kind of reality tv questions okay. because it's your world that you've been in for so long and it's new to me it's crazy it is crazy <laughs> and like especially this like second to last episode and this yes. when this episode of Hold My Crown comes out, the most recent episode will have just aired on Tuesday. Oh, we come out on Wednesday. Brutal. So craziness. Well yeah. <laughs> we might touch on that later. Okay. But in general, reality TV world, um, what is like well Let's let me say your second to worst moment on TV. <laughs> Thank you for not making me talk about my worst no, moment. No, we don't want to talk about Everyone it. Everyone who knows who I am knows what that is. Yeah, so we don't want to talk about we'll it. Skip so over second that. Second to worst moment, like something that was like crazy or hard or awkward or whatever, and then like your most fun or silly memory. Golly, there's been so many. Um, I think one of the toughest memory or toughest times on the show. Oh gosh. <laughs> I mean, there's so many different things that are, like, coming to my mind. But also, that's been nine years of my life. So yeah. it's, like, hard to – you kind of forget what you filmed. And totally. Because, like, a lot of times these things will pop back up on – I'll get tagged on Instagram feed. Yeah. And I'm, like, I completely forgot that I filmed that. Totally. I completely forgot that was a part of the episode, whatever. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. That was – obviously, we know what the hardest part was for me. And then something else that was hard to watch back – was uh, whenever I was getting married, this uh-huh. is a hard, kind of a, a rough t- topic too, but whenever I was getting married, a lot of people didn't agree with the pastor that I had oh, from mm-hmm, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And I got a lot of like hate because mm-hmm. that wasn't about me. And I was kind of being looked at in a light that about things that I never said. Right. So um, that was like really hard for me because yeah. a lot of times people don't understand that you don't know every single thing that happens. Of course. You know? Right. But I tried to fix it. I ended up having Lance Bass marry me. It was right. like from NSYNC. So that was, <laughs> <laughs> so that was like the best thing ever. How do you know him? Um, I met him through like Lisa Vanderpump and the whole thing. Really? So yeah, he married me and Jax. It's such a small NSYNC world. Married me. <laughs> he was Insync married Britney. I love it. He was my judge at Miss USA. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. See, so everything more, is connected. Yeah, we're all connected. Yeah, I think that was just a hard time because it's like coming from Kentucky and then living in LA the everything is very different. Yeah. And I'm I'm sure you understand mm-hmm. this, but it also like I felt like it wasn't a reflection of me it was yeah. just you know kind of like things that were going on in the media and stuff and right. that can be so hard because I think the hardest part about being on a reality t- show is whenever people judge your character yeah. without even knowing the real you totally and I feel like I've never shown any side of me other other than like being caring and love for everybody yeah. and everything so that can be difficult yeah totally and the thing is even with like and I feel like I've heard you and Jax talk about this on your show as well we film for hours, yeah. but like a minute makes it on the a show. Minute. Literally, one minute out of one hour, maybe. So it's like, and it's the juiciest parts of that minute, right? Exactly. So. <laughs> so there's so much that people don't get to know from behind the scenes. Like we share things on social media, and you know we have our interactions with people in real life. But there's so much that someone might assume about yes. you. The assumptions is exactly where, where yeah. I was going to. That can be like super hard, and I know a lot of people are facing that right now, even mm-hmm. with the valley. So, mm-hmm. you know, it could be troubling, but at the end of the day, I know who I am. Everybody knows who I am. And I feel like I proved myself no matter what. Oh you yeah, know? absolutely. And so. the thing is like over the years, I think hopefully people look at the big picture of what's shown, not yes. just like little individual moments where they might pull something from that's not like who you are as a person. Exactly. exactly. And I believe that people can have bad moments and it doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Oh, 100%. Like, overall, I... You know me, I and we're probably very similar. Like I give people the benefit of the doubt, oh, and all I feel the like time. you do so many yeah. times as well. So it's like 
people have bad moments doesn't mean they're a bad person. Yes. It, it is what it is. I'm like the queen of giving second and third chances. Sometimes it comes back to bite me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I try. You know, I always try to yeah. stay positive in every situation. Yeah. So. And then you don't have regrets. Like, oh, I wish I would have tried one more time. Like, you tried. And now you know. Yeah. Okay, I tried enough. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Many a situation. There's always a breaking point. Yes. Um, best part. Yeah, fun moment, silly moment. I heard when you did your episode with Michelle, the stories you were telling about the like charcuterie board and everything. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I had never heard of what a charcuterie board was, so that was crazy. Uh-huh. I mean, there's been so many funny things that I look back on. Like I crack up whenever I watch myself um at my bachelorette party in Miami, and we were all wearing these like huge, extravagant, tacky wedding dresses. Uh-huh. And I'm like freaking out because somebody brought a sign out that said, like it was like the bottle service girls like uh-huh. holding up a sign, and it said, Brittany, don't do it. And I took it personally, and this was at a nightclub. And I took it personally, and I just started like crying, Whoa. and I was like, let's get out of here. I can't believe that I did that. I would do that probably. So, yeah, like I actually took it personally instead of like as a joke. Oh, I and, would have taken it personally. Yeah. So we go home. Home and we go back to the hotel and I'm like crying in my huge wedding dress and like oh. putting my head down on the table. I laugh about it now because right. it's like such funny TV. Yeah. You know, things like that. Like I have to like laugh oh, about. Oh my god! But that, that was one that was so funny. Um, you know, I was watching a clip the other day, like talking about Mamaw's beer cheese for so long and just yeah. like how we like really didn't know anything. And Jax was like acting like he's going to run the business and can't figure anything out. I mean, there was so many hilarious <laughs> moments that we filmed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I and love it. It's hard to talk about, not really hard to talk about now, but my wedding was like the, my favorite thing that was yeah. ever filmed because it was like my dream wedding. It was in Kentucky at the castle that I always wanted to get oh. married at. I knew since I was a little girl, I would get married there and I got yeah. to like bring everybody to Kentucky, show everybody how how beautiful Kentucky was mm-hmm. and that was like really special to me oh that is so special yeah. I love that and it is so special that you have these memories captured yeah that you can look back on because even with the valley I'm watching these episodes and the girls are like five and six weeks old yes so little even Cruz looks like so little to right? me like he's gotten so her. much bigger so yeah. I mean time flies yeah there's it, that's the, uh, one of the great parts like I have my engagement on there I have my wedding on there I have like whenever I came to LA for the first time on yeah. there like first time I ever met Lisa Vanderpump first time I met like all my friends yeah and it's oh. like it's really cool to see you kind of watch me grow up in L.A. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I feel like the Vanderpump people have so grown up on TV. Oh, and it's yeah. it's just like I cannot imagine having those years and like – you know, drunk nights and things that moments that I've had that I wouldn't want to be televised to the whole country and more. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. But that's what makes a good TV show is whenever you're super honest and open and real and you're not trying to hide things because it always will come out. Yeah. And that's something that you told me when we first started filming, you were like, you don't need to watch other shows to try to figure out who you want to be or how you want to yes, be, no. just be you. And exactly. I, I took that advice and I was like, cool, I'm just going to be me and hope it works out. And I told that to every single person that came new this season. I yeah. was like, be yourself, you know, no matter what, don't try to like fake scenes or do anything like yeah. that because it will show on yes. a TV. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was so proud of all the new cast members because you guys all did such a great job yeah. and like really like showed your life. Yeah. Like Jesse and Michelle are being so good. Like they had a life coach on, like, yeah. you know, everybody's doing great. So like r- showing those like deep moments, like, yeah, I could be personal and like, feel like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. But yeah. like so many people relate to that. It's so true. And then I don't know about you because I'm sure you've cried on camera before. Oh yeah. <laughs> I obviously have cried on camera. We've all seen that in episode one right off the bat, but like, I feel so in the moment. I felt so awkward after crying because I'm like, this is how I'm really feeling and I'm really sad, but like, oh, this is going to be on TV. (laughs) Obviously, I was postpartum, hormonal. I did a lot of. And because it was everything that I was feeling in the moment, but then after I'm like, oh gosh, this is going to be on TV. Sunday scaries even if you're not drinking it's real it doesn't have to be Sunday and yeah. then, you know it's whenever but I feel like that's that's kind of what you do and also it goes by so fast you kind of forget what you say mm-hmm. how you acted mm-hmm. and then the next day you're kind of like oh my gosh what did I do why was I crying what was yeah. this what was that yeah but you know it's real emotions and real things and you literally had just had twin baby girls mm-hmm. and started filming right after so I gave you all the props for oh, that thank you it like was when, crazy w- they t- always talk about my break in between Vanderpump and the valley yeah and I was like 
you know, that was kind of tough to not be on the show for a while. But at the same time, I'm glad I had that time with Cruz and not had like dealing with postpartum. I had gained so much weight. Yeah. And I was like, I give so much props to like Sheena going through that. And, you know, because Lala bounced right back. But Mm -hmm. me and Sheena both had a little bit of things that we were going through. Yeah. Um, so, like, I give all the props to you guys for being able to do that on t- on TV and going through all the emotions that you're feeling on top of it. It's wild. Yeah. I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad we did it at yes. the end of it. Yeah. But in the moment, I was like, what are we doing? Yeah. But also, I, I also want to give credit to you because I feel like the only reason, not the only reason, but the, like, convincing factor was you Thank talking you. to me. Because, yeah. like, you know, Jackson, you both brought it up to me and Daniel in, like, the beginning of, like, hey, let's do this together. Like, we're all friends. Like, yeah. let's film. Do some fun in the summer and then I was so we're both so on the fence and I feel like you telling me like hey it's just us friends we'll film we'll have a good time like it'll be memories that we're gonna create that like was like the thing that just kind of like took us over the edge like okay we're gonna do it thank you yeah Yeah. Jax tries to take all the credit and I'm like I went to everybody individually literally and tried to convince them to do it and let them see all the positives yes that was happening so thank you for pointing that out everyone listen (laughs) (laughs) there was multiple conversations and then I and you also like really reassured me and you always told me like I'll I'll be here for you if you have any questions if you need anything and of course I was still nervous I've never done anything like this I've been on a pageant stage but this is just a completely different experience it's so different and you know I'll always be here for any questions anything you have you know you've got one season down now though so you're you're starting to figure it out (laughs) okay I have one more like general reality TV question and then we can kind of wrap up with the fan questions from Instagram okay okay so Did you watch reality shows before you met Jax? Like, what shows did you watch? And when you knew you were going to start filming Vanderpump, did you, like, do research and prepare? Or did you just go into it? Like, how – give me the the background. Okay. So, I've been asked this question so many times. I did not know who Jax was when I met him. I didn't know who any of the Vanderpumpers were. I met Katie – I'll tell the story really fast. Yeah. I was um, in Vegas. My best friend, Kara. Uh-huh. Um, have you met her yet? Yeah, yeah, I love her. Oh, yeah. You went to Mother's, Mother's Day, Day with us. Yeah. She lives in Vegas now, and her birthday is May 5th. Sheena's birthday is May 7th. Okay. So I was in Vegas for Kara's birthday. Jax and the whole crew was in Vegas for Sheena's birthday. Yeah. We happened to be at a bar in old Vegas called the Gold Spike or something. Okay. It had like life-size Jenga and all these things. And Kara noticed Katie and wanted to take a photo because Kara watches Vanderpump, watched okay. Vanderpump Rules. So I go over there and I take a photo of her and Katie together, Aww. which is like so funny because they ended up being my maid of honor, my matron of honor. Because oh it gosh. was like Katie's who we met first. Yeah. Um, and then Schwartz came over. They were so nice. They were asking us about our accents, whatever. We go to the bar to take a shot. That's whenever Jax came up to me. Okay. And like that's how we met whatever <laughs> that's how we met so a lot of people like always wondered how that happened I forgot what your original question was um, I was just, telling no, you that because that was part yeah. of the question like yeah. the story like when you guys first met but then also like did you watch reality tv before oh, yes. like what shows did you watch kind of growing up like what other yes. shows have you seen so I definitely did not know who they were Kara obviously told me after I started hanging out with Jax my mom knew yeah. all that but I didn't watch Vanderpump I didn't really I didn't watch any housewives it, not really any Bravo shows sorry Bravo love you now but um <laughs> I didn't really watch any Bravo shows back then it was more like I loved TLC uh-huh. so like I loved like Trading Spaces oh. and like all the interior design Did you watch shows. John and Kate Plus Eight. I watched John and Kate Plus Eight uh-huh. a little bit. I also used to watch like um, Jersey Shore. Yes, and the Hills. The Hills. hills. Okay. Yes, the okay. Hills. You know, I thought it was so cool whenever I came to Vanderpump that the same production company did the Hills that did mine, oh, and I got to meet so them all. Cool. So like for me, that was like a full circle kind of moment. I was like, totally. this is crazy. You know, Laguna Beach stuff mm-hmm. like that. But that was about it. I yeah. wasn't like crazy into reality TV. Yeah, but totally. I love the TLC shows. Like, they're Same. so funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I watch those, too. And I watch, like, the Jersey Shore for, yes. like, a few seasons and all of that. So I feel like we have very similar things. But I never watched the Vanderpump. Yeah. My mom did. I feel like at that point it was, like, older people kind of were more onto Bravo. Yeah. And now it's kind of gotten a little bit more of a younger crowd totally. watching, you know? Totally. Yeah. It's a really quick episode. Okay. Capri. Oh, yeah. Dinner. I feel like we can just touch on it. Oh, and yeah. Then, okay. So, like, what were you – you knew kind of what was – going on in Capri, the Capri dinner, I had no idea. (laughs) When people started yelling, I was just like, Homer Simpson, like that, like me when he's like backing into like yeah. the fence because he's like, what is happening? Yeah. So I was just kind of like jaw on the floor. I was like, why are all these people yelling? Where is all this drama coming from? Because when we had the girls night, 
I was in the house crying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I missed all the comments that were happening. So like, yes. give me like your perspective in it because I was just like not present for anything. I think that it was just because Kristen had brought it up at the party uh-huh. out of the th- out of thin air, kind of like the girls' night, the girls' uh-huh. night party, because mm-hmm. she, I, I know for sure, she felt back into the corner and she wanted to take the pressure off of Alex being invited to the guys' night okay. or whatever off. Yeah. So she just kind of like blurted out mm-hmm. these things that she shouldn't have, mm-hmm. and I'm sure she instantly regretted it. Like yeah. Kristen, I love Kristen; she has a great heart, and I know I'm sure she instantly regretted it because it like. It was kind of a betrayal to Michelle, yeah. you know? Yeah. So then whenever we're at the Capri party, um, it just was like the elephant in the room. Yeah. And everybody was still fuming off of it. I think everybody had a, a chance to like think about it and be like, what had happened last night? Right. Like Michelle was in shock a little bit. Like yeah. she didn't really know how to take it. She was like, where is this coming from? Yeah. And then Janet wasn't even at the party. Right. So then and Janet, her name was brought into Yeah, her name was brought into it. Mm-hmm. So Janet's sitting here thinking... That she said the racist word. I yeah. hate even having to talk about it, but it yeah. was brought up. So, yeah. and um, and whenever Janet's doing that FaceTime, she was actually thinking like, I never said that. Yeah, you know. So it was a, oh. a game of telephone that needed to be like fixed, and yeah. that's what I really wanted. Was I'm always trying to smooth things over, mm-hmm. fix things, mm-hmm. bring people back together, admit what you did say you're sorry and let's move on. Exactly. Um, and then I feel like at the party, it was a lot of, I'm sorry, but, mm-hmm. uh, and then it just kept boiling up, boiling up, boiling up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was wild. And I remember my blood was like running so <laughs> hot. It was like, you're, you're kind of, your heart is racing and you're like, it was so intense. And it I, was. And I feel like when everybody is watching it, they can see how intense it was, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't translate as intense it was in the room. I mean, it just felt like, I love that they had the sounds of the crickets in the background <laughs> because it was like, it was so intense, like you're saying. Yeah. And I mean, it was just, it was just a lot. It and I was. was also so confused by a lot of things because even though we were living it, I was like, where is this coming from? Why is this being brought up? And yeah. also like, who's actually saying what? Because nobody yeah. was like owning up to what they had said at, at that point. Yeah. You know? Yeah, totally. So it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of like going around and... I feel like nobody was really owning up to everything fully. Exactly. Um, Just a little bit here and there, right. but nobody really knew what was going on. Exactly. And then also, one thing I didn't know about Janet was that she could be so spicy <laughs> because I remember her like snapping at Kristen and like getting so intense, like yelling at her. And I was like, whoa, Janet. <laughs> and like, you know that because you're like closer with yeah, her. Yeah. And I became closer with her through filming. And like, I've known her and loved her, but I've always just seen like the sweet, yeah. soft Janet. She was mad because she felt like her name was brought into of course, it. You know, anybody would be. I have a few questions from the fans that we'll kind of wrap up with and I really like there was one that was phrased really well okay um so this is from Lolly Jenna Gina and she says what changed within her within you to help find her peace and voice in her marriage because obviously you know I feel like I've heard you mention like something happened there was like a big moment Mm -hmm. but like Before that, I feel like you had to have found that strength and that peace. Like, what kind of changed there? Yeah, I mean, there had been so many things. It like I know I've talked about this like one big fight that made me like actually pack my stuff up and get out of there. But this had been piling on me for a couple for a while. Like it did. Yeah, that one fight was my breaking point. Right. But I feel like I was just like things had just been piling up, piling up, piling up. Yeah. But also, I think Cruz gave me my strength. Like, yeah. after becoming a mom and, like, noticing that was, like, so important and I didn't want him to be in, living in a toxic situation. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I wanted him to grow up in a happy home no matter what. Yeah. Are you going to cry? I'm going to cry. <laughs> He's going to cry. <laughs> I'm trying not to cry. Um, um, it's just, I mean, yeah, it's your child. Yeah. And that's, like, what he sees as, yes. like, love. And you want him to see a healthy, strong, beautiful love. Exactly. And me and Jax have so much love for each other. And yeah. I still love him dearly but like I cannot let my son grow up watching that and thinking that's normal yeah like what if he grows up and then thinks that that's normal for his own relationship right. like mm-hmm. he doesn't deserve that yeah so I feel like I got all my strength from him yeah honestly yeah. and I just knew that th- that you know he was worth it and I deserved better and yeah. you know I just kind of just like 
got way stronger all of a sudden and like was able to, I always say that like, it was like a veil was lifted Mm. and I started to notice everything that was wrong and everything that I was putting up with and just letting slide. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, uh, I try to be a very positive person all the time. So for me, it was like, we would get an argument and then he would say he was sorry. And I would like, let it go Mm -hmm. and try to like move past it. But like internally you're like, just adding that stuff in into your mind and into yeah. your heart and like yeah. it's like it'll bubble over yeah if you don't like face things and that's yeah. what I had been doing for so long yeah like I mean, letting things slide taking up for him all the time apologizing yeah. for him all the time cleaning up his messes all the time yeah like that like weighs on a person it does and I feel like just from what you're sharing even right now like if and when things were to work out, you ha- you guys have so much to work through because so it's been piling up, but it hasn't been processed or actually dealt with. Exactly, it's just been pushed. So, like, if you can process it and all the things you said, you have a I you know heard many interviews and yeah. we've talked. Like, you have a few things that you're like, hey, these need to happen. Yeah, if that happens, you still have things to work through. Exactly, to get to a healthy point. But I'm glad that you have that strength, and that makes perfect sense. That your baby, of yeah. course, of yeah. course, your baby. You want. Your child, I would hope, I think most mothers and fathers like mm-hmm. want their child to grow up in a happy, healthy yes. household. And Jax wants that too. Of like, course. you know, he's yeah. a great father. It's just we were not working. It was just not a good living situation yeah. anymore. It was like I was living with a roommate that I was also fighting with. Right. Like, who wants to do that? No. <laughs> like, nope, no, 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 no thanks. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. So last question is from Mrs. Edith Foster. Okay. And it says, How do you balance being a mama and working? Because mm-hmm. you're doing all the things. Like you're so busy and you're an incredible mother. Thank you. Yeah. That means a lot to me. Um, I just think I'm always putting crews first mm-hmm. and then like just trying to work hard on everything I, else that I do while I can. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you have to have a balance. And luckily me and Jax are doing really good with co-parenting. Yeah. So like if I'm busy, um, I can drop him off over there. He'll watch him. If he's doing something, he'll drop him off to me. Yeah. Um, you know, and also I have crews in a lot of activities and certain things. So yeah. it's like if he's sleeping, I'm like working on my podcast or yeah. I'm doing ads or I'm like doing this, taking interviews, doing this, this, that. Like it just depends. But, you know, as a mom, you just kind of fit it in. Yeah. Honestly, I just go with the flow. I don't really have like a secret recipe or anything like that. Yeah. Like everybody parents so different. Yeah. And for me, it's just like take every single day as it comes. I feel like that sounds like you're saying you're flexible. I'm Would very you, flexible. You have to be with kids. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Same here. It's yes. like mayhem over here. Yeah. And we just got to go with the flow and make it work. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So where can people find you on social media? Um, on social, you can find me at at Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y. I love that. <laughs> I'm like so jealous. You just got your name. I Nothing know. else. That's incredible. It was a random night. I was lucky. I had already been um, verified at, under a, a, at BN Cartwright. And just one night I was over at Saucy's house and I was just like, hmm, let me see if Brittany's available. And it was available that night. So I called my publicist and it had not been available ever. <gasps> it was like something was telling me to check it out. Yes. So I called my publicist and because when you're verified, you have to get it changed. Yeah. So like I got it changed and I was Brittany. Oh it my was gosh. crazy. People can't believe how I got jealous. that. So happy for you. Okay, so at Brittany, thank yes. you so much for being thank here you. on the Hold My Crown podcast. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Right. See you thank later, guys. You. Bye. Bye. Yay, networks.